I think every single show that House of Deviants do, every single moment of every single show changes the world. Come into our house. I was kind of reflecting on my practice as a drag performer and how that impacted my confidence and thinking, oh, actually, there's something, you know, there's something to explore here with, you know, with the, there'd be a similar outcome for, for these guys, I guess. So, so um, for, for us, it's a trans and try is wild and bur bubbly and crazy. And she, she is also go gobby. Amazing poor, poor and to be the gold gobby to to get get your your five voices yet. Do you find that sometimes people with disabilities don't get their voices heard? Yes, um, and some and people and don't 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 get get their voices yet. But yeah, them um, and that that is some something hard. I, I, I do do feel that more more people less certain to me when when um, I am out of drag and that. And is that different to before you started the project? Yeah, yeah. So some um, um, it is very very di different. Um, it's gone from strength in, to strength since I first um, was involved in it. Popping in the bedroom with drag makeup up around eyebrows up there and lips down there and they've gone on to achieve some remarkable things since then. We think the work that House of Deviants do is absolutely fantastic. They're engaging people who otherwise aren't always involved in the arts, don't have the opportunities to get involved in these kind of projects. The people that we support it's difficult to explain the growth that we've seen in those individuals since they've been involved with House of Deviants. A combination of the confidence that we've seen them develop, being able to develop their own drag persona, their own personalities, the skills they've acquired from being on stage, from performing, from being part of a group, from being able to explore their own identity. It's been, the transformation in some of the individuals has been absolutely fabulous. Well, Back, I would say, back three years ago, I was in a very bad place, pretty much in a black box. Yeah, I feel that I'm not in a box anymore. I can be who I want to be and be appre appreciative of who I've become through doing drag and stuff like that. I am one of the facilitators within this project and I'm also what's called a process supervisor. So process supervision is quite unique to this project and what it does, it, it entails a, an understanding of the whole, whole group process, supporting the, facili the facilitator, the group, understanding what's happening in the dynamics and then I provide in between the blocks that we have of facilitators, we provide what's, what's called a reflexivity session. So here I get to meet with the queens and we get to reflect about what they've learned, how this connects to their overall journey. Uh, we do this through movement uh, and we do that through understanding the different skills that they're gaining and uh, it's been a really interesting way for them to have a moment, sit with everything, move through it. Uh, you know, being from the beginning to, to now, you see the little steps. And because I come every six weeks, it's kind of interesting because I do see the impact of all the facilitators on, on their process and how they start seeing things in different ways. But, you know, it's, it's really about them connecting to their strengths to uh, an under understanding their potential as well. When people are saying, giving you praise and stuff like that, because that's one of the hard things that I've had to learn over the years. The Newport show, that was the like bigger one, because when you had like people saying, wow, I can't believe you couldn't do that, you can do this and that. And then sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming and you're thinking, hang on a minute, you're having all these people saying all nice things to you, but then, you haven't had that all your life. You don't know how to take that on board. We just basically want to show that anybody with anything can be anything. Yeah, what, tell us about your life before Deviance. 
Um, um, basically, um, um, I was was like like quite 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 lonely. Only um, um. I don't class it as a project. I class it as a whole community because she's gained friendships, connections. She's grown as a person. They all look out for each other now and. Socially, you know, her life has completely changed. You know, I've seen for myself that the Queens can make their decisions, they can do things for themselves, you know, um, and the benefits that that's having on them is just making the project brilliant, but also it's just making their lives richer, my life richer. It's kind of easier for me because I'm not have to make decisions anymore, which is lovely. We want to do that. Okay, let's do it. So your relationship with Nicole, how is that? Well, that's grown um, massively, you know, it's not so much a mother and daughter relationship, you know, we have a friendship now and um, we both have independence, so um, she's not reliant on me, so, you know, I was more of a carer, but now, like, I'm, I'm back to being a mother or a friend again, which is great. I can fit in without being judged for having a disability or having anything that's wrong. Yeah, that's the way it's kind of helped me in confidence and with like depression and anxiety, with like um, just in life in general, really. We have been really fortunate to have Arts Council Wales uh, support us, to have WMC provide spaces um, and to have a pool of facilitators that are making this project you know, a, a sustainable one. I don't think I know that this block of funding for the House of Deviants has been transformative. The shows before, during and after this project uh, have been completely different. Like the funding that we've received this year has been really exciting for us in that it's given us opportunities to be able to buy time with professional artists and really kind of upscale and professionalise the Queens. Um, we thought that they were working with me every week and you know, my, my scale and knowledge is limited. Um, so having a budget that we can pay other artists and lots of different artists to come and work with them and share skills and learning has been really beneficial to them. Um, you know, a lot of the time people with learning disabilities don't get the opportunity to go to university and study drama. They don't get the opportunity to learn those things. So, you know, for people to be learning, learning these skills, the, the, the usual route would be through school and university was not really an option. Um, so, you know, the funding has been vital in providing that, that professional level of training. Well, one of the fantastic things since the Deviants have had funding is they've been able to open up the opportunity to more people. People saw the Deviants performing and felt like, well, maybe I could do that. And the new draglings are just doing fantastically. The other fantastic things, they have brilliant support throughout the whole project. So they meet every week and every week they get to try something new, try something de different, develop their performance skills. So the performances from when I first started watching maybe two years ago to now, oh, the difference is vast. The Queens are more confident. They've got great storylines. They've got great characters. And that's all been because of the ongoing support that both Gareth and Sophie have been able to offer and the experts that they've been able to bring in to support them on a weekly basis. And I think what people have achieved has exceeded maybe the expectations both the individuals had and people around them. We've had someone come in who specialised just about how it's okay to get things wrong. And it seems like such a silly thing, like a throwaway, but the importance of that and how much that's helped the Queen's when we're prepping for a show now, where previously, if someone would get something wrong, there'd be headbutts, there'd be an argument, there'd be, you know, a lot of things to kind of sort out because there was this pressure. But just from having a five-week slot of having someone in purely to work on that, and now if they get something wrong, we have a little song where we sing about how it's brilliant to get things wrong, and everyone's smiling and laughing, and like that's just one example of like a little bit of development that's helped from that. Costuming, things like just having, cost, having new costumes just meant so much for the Queens and for them to be involved in the, and well, actively designing those costumes and working with Helena to create the costumes, that's hugely elevated the group. The investment in like social um, media has been brilliant, you know, we've had increasing followers um, and because of that our reach has got much bigger, um, our ticket sales are up, 
um, we've reached out globally. I mean, we're working with the University of Colorado at the moment on inclusive drag costuming. So, you know, and that wouldn't have happened if we didn't have the social media reach that we had. And then in terms of funding as well for uh, social media, so now it means I get to come in and I get to be on a freelance basis working for the Deviants. I get to spend time building our audience online, getting the Queen's ideas to film some videos and give them, you know, we, we've, we've made a TikTok account. And I think at the moment we've got like, I think all in all over 100,000 views since we've made the account, which isn't like really good, you know? It means that they're getting seen and they're getting the, the they get lovely comments that we get through, people like really supporting them, people with learning disabilities commenting on these videos thinking, I could never do anything like that, but because I've seen you, I've seen someone with Down syndrome, I've seen someone with cerebral palsy who can do drag, I can do that too. And it's so important to get that message across. Um, but also, you know, just having, being paid to run the project is nice. Because I've been working for three years voluntarily doing it. Like, so actually to have that recognition and to be funded to do it meant that I can to spend more of my time focusing on the project and developing it and growing it. Um, and obviously the outreach stuff, so things like the draglings and the peer-led workshops are really, you know, having the funding has been great in that we can then, that's it, increased our reach, but also it's delivered the sort of a taste in some of the work that we do and some of the outcomes of our work to other community members. The Queens have something, they've got talent, they've got chutzpah, they've got charm. Being able to consistently build those skills over a period of time, I mean, it's, it's improved them, they're better performers, but it's also legitimised their space on stage. It's, it's professionalised their performance capabilities. And it's still, of course, it's going to be a joyous shambles. That's the nature of the, of the beast and why it's so brilliant. But now they've got really honed skills to back that up it's incredible and makes it all the more powerful because not only are audience members now kind of challenged by the content and the nature of their performances but they're also going god then they're really good at it and i know that working kind of having rolling training for people with learning disabilities is incredibly important. The duration of this project um, that has been made possible to be a durational project because of the funding, it, it wouldn't have worked if it had been a kind of maybe a three week intensive summer school or something. It, it wouldn't have succeeded. It's the fact that it's been over months and months and months and months. So where's, where's your beginning position? Drilling skills um, and revisiting and really bedding them in that is worth its weight in gold and needs needs to and must continue uh, the the notion of the idea of a drag troupe <laughs> um, is great that you know these funding bodies are getting a, a hold of and they want to encourage and they they want to they want to see it thrive hopefully um, they you know, the funders will start saying, oh, it's like, this is not a niche thing. This is actually a thing that has a lot of impact and, and has a ripple effect that's positive. It's not changing the whole world and it's not changing even every single audience member's preconception. But it will be surprising people and there will be people who, who have those preconceptions challenged and who go out into the world with different expectations of people with learning disabilities and who spread the word and who won't be as scared of getting it wrong when they meet someone with a learning disability. They'll feel more like, oh yeah, I can laugh and joke with this person as I would anyone else. And I think they are already yeah, making massive changes and they will continue to do so. Round the corner, down the road, is the house of deviance, I'm told. Fabulous and miraculous, we built this house on divergence. So are you deviants out there? Woo! Coming to our house. So it's fire, it's the glamour, isn't it? That's what you want.